All right, thank you for uh, joining us on the uh, Los Angeles Times. I'm Todd Martins, a writer with Pop and Hiss. And Gary Kennedy, also a writer with Pop and Hiss as well. And uh, you and I both covered uh, the Grammy nominations uh, last night. Yes. We've covered the Grammys uh, in the past as well. Um, Garrick, before we get into some snubs or surprises, I just wanted to ask you, because you recently wrote a really good story about sort of the emergence of new R&B stars. Um, you know, you talked about people like Miguel and Frank Ocean, and, you know, just were re surprised to see them both do relatively well in the major categories? Was that... Well, I, I think we all kind of knew Frank Ocean would do well. I was hoping Miguel would kind of continue kind of this path of mm -hmm. the heat that he caught. What really surprised me was that Adorn made it into, you know, Song of the Year because that was, it's been on the R&B charts for eight months, but is that something that a pop audience is really paying attention to? So, I mean, we got the answer, which was yes. So that was very surprising to me. Yeah, and this is his second album. Second album, yeah. yeah. And it's it's a world's difference because that first one debuted like 109, yeah. and then this, this last one debuted at number three. And I mean, just to kind of see that evolution in such a short time has been kind of cool to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, no, it's a, it's a new, sort of a new sound for him, taking it in a little more experimental ways. I mean, uh, you sort of wrote about there's a new urban alternative yes. category, yeah. um, which kind of, they only put three artists in yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> they only put three, and then the third is Chris Brown, who, you know, yes, he does have those Euro pop and those, those dubstep elements, but I kind of found it surprising that, you know, Usher, for instance, who had all those different textures on his album, didn't make that cut. Me and you, we mm -hmm. talked about the Rihanna record, so of course it wasn't her strongest, you know, last year Loud was nominated for album of the year, but I kind of thought Talk That Talk could round out that category, um, because it have, I mean, have We Found Love, which is her biggest single. Yeah, no, I mean, I kind of, it was kind of interesting, because there wasn't, like, heading into the Grammys, I think we were, people were sort of wondering, because there wasn't that you know, Adele 21, there right. wasn't that, you know, Taylor Swift's Red came out, you know, too late for it to be eligible for yeah. the Grammys this year. So there wasn't sort of like an instant, oh, that's a, a favorite. Right. You know, so um, there were sort of two ways they could go. They could go sort of just nominating, continuing on with like recognizable artists, like the pop names going with Rihanna, Pink, Justin Bieber, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe even Drake. Um, or they could start to sort of bring in like a new sort of crop and try to sort of point the direction for sort of, you know, artists who are coming up and bubbling under and people should sort of pay more attention to. And it seems to be the way that's overall kind of the way they went um, in terms of recognizing a Frank Ocean and fun and then right. also sort of, you know, sort of really recognizing the Black Keys for, you know, a, a, they've been around for a while, but sort of a decade of work and sort of they've really only been in, in the pop realm for the last, you know, two, two albums or so, so since albums, really yeah. working with Danger Mouse. But, I'm curious, though, um, one thing that I've always loved with your particular take on the Grammys is, like you just said, kind of breaking it down and kind of giving us at home what we can maybe expect without, well, there's still room for surprises, but I want to know what really surprised you. You've been covering this for so long. Um, you know what, I, overall, I mean, it's sort of, I, I look at the album of the year field, mm -hmm. and the kind of thing is I sort of look at the big, the top four categories, and the Grammys kind of have this sort of have your cake and eat it too sort of thing with 81 categories that can sort of, spread out, and you could, right. you could put Drake in rap album, or you could put, you know, a Fiona Apple in alternative album, and then you still sort of recognize everyone, um, even though the big four categories are the ones that are on the air, the ones that everybody's paying attention to. Yeah. Um, I think in, you know, the album of the year field, you know, this year, I you know, everything that's in there, I don't like everything that's in there, but everything that's in there, I can sort of, like, understand where they were coming from, right. and I felt like, you know, there were successful albums, and for the most part, you know, with some exceptions, they were largely interesting, mm -hmm. you know, works. Um, you know, I, I think uh, the Best New Artist, I uh, was especially, you know, I, I look at that field with, you know, Alabama Shakes, Fun, Hunter Hayes, uh, Lumineers, and, and Frank Ocean. You know, one thing that I've been sort of surprised about is the last two years of the Grammys now, this year and, and last year, there hasn't really been uh, hip-hop in the album of the year field. Right. You know, I know Nick, Nicki got a Best New Artist. And people are still before. really burning over, you know, Kanye was not getting that, you know, mm -hmm. the, the last time. So I, I was surprised because I think me and you talked about the possibility of maybe Drake sliding his way into there. What do you think maybe happened? Um, you know, I think actually Drake put out a record that uh, was deserving of the album of the year. And I think Drake mm -hmm. had a record that was deserving. I think uh, I wrote about The Roots had a record that could have been in there. Um, you know, and, th and there's certainly some independent hip hop artists that you know we both like that you know the Grammy voters weren't going to recognize. But you know, in terms of like those two big artists, I, with Drake, I, you know, uh, I, I'm I'm still trying to figure that out. I think 
he was partly hurt by the simple fact of the Grammy eligibility period mm -hmm. is so sort of like it's not a straight calendar year. It's yeah. September to October. So his record kind of lost a little bit of momentum. You know, there have been a number of hip hop artists that came out, you know, that have been, you know, that have had successes since then. You know, I know Two Chains had a, a big album, and um, I'm forgetting who else is in the rap field at the moment. But, um, <laughs> you know, but, um, you know, I was surprised that, you know, Drake wasn't in there. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I think I, I'm more surprised that. You know that this is the second year in a row that they haven't really recognized the hip hop artist, and I was especially I was it was kind of a long shot, but I was hoping that Kendrick Lamar would sort of get a best new artist. I was too. I was too. But also, do you think that maybe that's something we can look at next year, where he'll be in that category? But then also, he could possibly be that strong contender for album of the year for Pip, maybe next year if he keeps that momentum. I think so. I mean, because yeah. you can submit for best new artist up to three times. Okay. So uh, you know in. As long as you haven't had, you know, he'll be eligible for Best New Artist again next year. So I mean, I, you know, and, and that could sort of shape up as sort of the early favorite, especially if that record continues to do as well as it's right. doing, uh, you know, right now. Um, you know, I mean, but you know, you've written about uh, you, you interviewed uh, Drake. I mean, sort of, yes. you know, do you have any sense of you know why maybe voters didn't gravitate toward that record? Or you know, I, I think I'd have to agree with you with the momentum. Um, it, it seems kind of if you look at. What I what I noticed was, out of the songs that they they picked, you know, picking mm -hmm. Hell Yeah over Take Care or some of the other uh, deeper songs in the album was kind of surprising because I felt like that was his less successful single out of all the ones that he put out. But also he kind of did just kind of stop putting out stuff and then did a tour. So I don't know, maybe people forgot about the project, but I mean it made it into a uh, rap album, but then that worries me because the Nas record was so strong um, mm -hmm. this year, and also so many people saw that as kind of a return of form for him, and then, you know, as we've already talked, a lot of people really, really, really love Lupe and what he stands for, so that that's a tough category. I was kind of surprised to see 2 Chains there. I mean, the, the album was big, so was the Rick Ross, but I didn't think it, it's strong enough. Um, to kind of stand against some of these other things, I would have put maybe a J Cole there instead, um, over one of those two. Well, I think uh, I think the J Cole record was nominated. Was it last year? Was it last? I think it was. When he was recognized last, when he was best new artist. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's been. right. Yeah, but, that would have been the years. Yeah. But I mean, I love um, I, I love that Lupe record. I know I'm probably in sort of a minority. It's gotten sort of mixed reviews. And yeah. People in the industry mixed. tend to like him, and he's well known. <laughs> and, but um, I, I love the fact that he's addressing sort of big issues. And, right. Um, What's surprising me though about Lupe um, is the last couple of times that I have seen him have been some really unexpected guest mm -hmm. uh, spots. You know, he came out, you know, at the Trey Songs concert. You know, he came out, you know, at the Big Boy Neighborhood thing. So he's really kind of tapping into kind of this uh, fan base of pure, like, really, I call it radio rap fans. I'm sure mm -hmm. there's. there's there's more, more, more for better words for it, but I call it Radio Rap fans. And he's kind of appealing to them now, which that was not something that he was always that big about. So yeah. I, that he could be a surprise win for that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'd like to see him, but I think you're probably right in that uh, it's going to be between uh, Nas and Drake yeah. in that category. Um, well, I mean, I suppose we should talk about um, Justin Bieber. Um, I, I personally don't think it was a snub. Um, you know, I think it's a... Uh, a snub is more, you know, an, an an artist who deserves to be recognized, who isn't being recognized by the industry, um, and deserves to sort of be propped up, right. as opposed to somebody who's, you know, really well known and just sort of working with, you know, insert producer here of the moment. Um, so I, I I think the Grammys got that right, um, although. Um, uh, his manager took to Twitter and disagrees. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what what do you sort of were you, were you surprised that Justin Bieber isn't in there? Do you think he deserved a, a pop uh, album knob or an album of the year? You know, well, uh, well, the one thing that only surprised me about him not being there is that Call Me Maybe made the cut. And outside of it being one of the most popular <laughs> songs, I just personally didn't believe that it was deserving of a Grammy nomination. Because to me, it, it's just such a prestigious award, and it feels it feels so very of the moment. This is a particular artist that I, I don't think will be around next year. I, I don't think we'll see you know more things. And I hate to say that. So you do look at somebody like Justin Bieber, who is kind of still made sure that he's around. But is the question I, I ask often is, is he around because of the talent? Is he around because he's just a cute teenager? You know, it, it's just one of those things where I don't know if this is a career that's going to have longevity. So him not getting 
Grammy nominations is is the Academy kind of in agreement with that, or what, what do you think? Well, I mean, I think it's interesting you mentioned Carly Rae because I think uh, you know she's an artist who hasn't really had established herself beyond that song, right. yet, and the album isn't doing super well. But I, I think as a you know that song is, is catchy, it was everywhere. There were so many became such a YouTube mm-hmm. phenomena, um, you know, and also I think it comes, you know it comes down a little bit to likability. I mean, she's right. more a likable sort of person, she's very likable, yeah, and uh, I think. People go back and forth on Justin a little bit, right. but um, I think for me, you know, it's you have to look at people like Justin Bieber, and you look at other boy bands or people who come from the teen pop world, you know, One Direction and Jonas Brothers. Who also and got nothing. They got nothing. got nothing. And you, I think Grammys voters are tending right now to sort of take a wait and see approach, mm-hmm. sort of step back and sort of, all right, you know, they nominated the Jonas Brothers for Best New Artist, and they've fallen off the face of the earth. Right. You know, so it's sort of. It's kind of like wait and see, and it's like, all right, you have a hit record, you work with you know the the best producers money could buy, you know, that's kind of like wait and see, and if you could really right. sort of turn that into you know a sustained career, and then they'll come back and nominate him. I mean, he's still he's still a kid, he's got a whole career, yeah. you know. Let's sort of take sort of a wait and see approach, and at the same time, you know, you look at who they nominated in some of these fields, you look at you know back hands like excuse me, it's like the Lumineers and Eldana Shakes, you know, they've really sort of emphasized more sort of organic, sort of rootsy instrumentation, mm. you know, people who are playing real instruments, they kind of sort of moved away from, you know, the sort of production, sort of dazzling, uh, at, at, at least for this year in some of the major categories. At least that's sort of my break off. You know what I, what I thought this morning? I was actually, um, I was listening to some music, and I realized that Ellie Goulding did not make the cut anywhere. Yeah, I was a little surprised by that. I thought maybe she had a shot for a uh, best new artist. I thought, yeah, I um, thought of anything. You know, I, I'd honestly, you know, I, I go, you know, back and forth. I, I don't know if that record is totally hundred percent consistent. I would have maybe, I was, I was maybe more surprised. Like, you know, Emily Sande, Sande, is that how you, yeah. she wasn't a, a best new artist. But um, you know, I think let's wrap up with the discussion on on fun. Okay. Um, you know, they were a huge uh, band this year for the Grammys. Um, pretty much also of that sort of one hit of, you know, similar to Carly Rae with their uh, We Are Young. They've right. had a little bit more sustained success. The album's been doing a little bit better. Yeah. Um, I know, do you think they're, uh, can, can, can you see them being a, a sleeper? Can you see them taking the album of the year from Frank Ocean? Oh, gosh, that's so difficult. I don't think so. I, I just look at how the masses have reacted to Channel Orange, and I just think that that's kind of a sure lock. They might take Best New Artist over him, though. He might not be walking away with that. Hmm. But I think he definitely has that album of the year. Um, it's it's tough, though, because then theirs could always be the Mumford upset. You know, <laughs> there's, there's so many different ways uh, the Grimms could go with this. But I, I really, if anything, I, I think Fun could probably... They might even just walk away with Record of the Year because I think that's a stronger category for them to take. Yeah, I could see them. I, th- I think Best New Artist is going to be, be between uh, probably Alabama Shakes and uh, Frank Ocean, but probably yeah. Frank Ocean. Um, you know, fun for me, I, it just seems so, for as orchestral as those songs are, it's so, so labored. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't, it's not very, it's not yeah. very fun. But um, we, shall, we shall see how it goes, we and we'll be back anywhere. on Pop and Hiss with more Grammy analysis over the next uh, few weeks. And uh, I'm sure uh, leave your comments and let us know what you'd like us to cover, and uh, we'll do our best. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks.